talk about this phrase we use over and over again, which I think needs a rethink. We're looking for diverse people. I always say in regards to anti-racism is that you have to be specific. You have to name the problem that you're trying to solve. So don't call it, we have an issue with diversity and inclusion, when what you really mean is, we've got an issue with racism. If you're talking about the fact that you're worried about colleagues within your business who are still feeling uncomfortable, who take conversations about racism personally, who when participating in conversations about race or racism, or they're presented with information, they spend more time trying to nitpick the fact that they don't agree with this information. They don't see the perspective or where somebody's coming from and they want to intellectualize the issue rather than focus on the point that's trying to be made or are still gaslighting other black colleagues who are sharing their experiences. Call that what it is, white fragility. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the different phrases that you need to know, but the other two that I would add in that you want to be comfortable saying what it is, is white supremacy and white privilege. But going back to my earlier point, when I still hear us refer to black people within an organizational context as the diverse hires, I'm always trying to pull people up about it including HR people and people who work in diversity, equity and inclusion. My rationale is this. Yes, I will talk about diversifying an organisation, a team, a department, a board, but you will never hear me refer to black people or brown people or indigenous people as the diverse hires. When I talk to executive board teams, one of the examples I use all the time is to talk about me in this context. I'm born in Britain, so I'm as British as they come. Now, if I'm competing with a colleague, a white person who is going for the same job as me, because they are white, they will have a clear run. Yes, I know they've got to go through the process, but you know what I mean. But for me, I have to go through as the diverse person Therefore, the organisation has to do different things, have maybe different processes if they follow those processes, so I can have access to the same opportunity. But guess what? The only difference between me and the other person is the colour of our skin. Yet we're both born here, but I'm called diverse and he or she isn't. So when you think about this labelling of diverse, my issue isn't about what I call the label brigade. Yes, we shouldn't label people, but you know what? We live in a world that likes to label. It isn't about that. It's the assumption that white is normal, that white is the standard. So anybody who isn't white is by definition diverse. That is an example of white supremacist thinking. Now remember, white supremacy isn't about the Ku Klux Klan. It isn't about the far right the National Front. It's this idea that within the society we live in, there's a hierarchy according to the colour of your skin. And white people are on top and everybody else is underneath with black people being at the bottom. So white supremacy holds on to the idea that white people are inferior, that they are the standard. So anybody coming into their space, their country, their teams has to assimilate learn their language, talk the way they talk, communicate the way they talk, adopt their cultural and social norms. That is white supremacy. So every time you keep reinforcing that language of talking about, well, we're looking for diverse people. Therefore, every time that you are talking about the steps that you're trying to make to becoming anti-racist, if you don't correct your language and your terminology, and again, I go back to, if you haven't done the work to understand what racism is and how it manifests itself, you are actually still going to be perpetuating the very thing that you want to dismantle. So this is why I comment on LinkedIn. You've seen me comment before and it got a lot of attention on somebody else's post. I mean, she was making the same point and I was just reinforcing but helping explain why it's an issue. You cannot refer to black people as diverse because you are 
unwittingly and reinforcing the idea that white people are the norm or standard. So that's me, my little soapbox for today, but it's an important one. And I think it's, it's something that we could all do with bearing in mind. See you next time. Thank you.